Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, <coughs> I felt the compunction to add my voice not only to approve and to support this historic resolution, but in the main, Mr. Speaker, to deal with an issue of misinformation which seemingly have pervaded our society to such an extent that it goes down the annals of belief. Mr. Speaker, I'm happy to hear the member from Suzel confess in this August chamber. They say confession is good for the soul. And when he can stand on his feet here and speak about a contribution to his constituency being made through the Ministry of Housing, sanctioned by the Honorable Prime Minister, he must understand that today St. Lucia enjoys a Prime Minister that is unlike the one that occupied that chair before. Unlike, you know, and you should ask yourself, why is it your leader never found it necessary to at least take a page from the book of the member of Forcastries East and give the opposition one bag of cement. And you know it has been coined, Mr. Speaker, in such an embracing tone. And my colleague from Denry North would say, pa memo saxima ki pete a constituency that is the hardship that was deliberately created by the leader of the opposition who was then prime minister for five years and you know mr speaker he had the audacity the goal the gumption to go on social media and say as though he's still prime minister he will be repairing an HRDC in his constituency with a CDP allocation. Can you believe this, Mr. Speaker? And he even stated the amount of 100,000. I will, let me quote him, I will use 100,000 out of my CDP allocation. You know, you know, you know, you know, Mr. Speaker, it irks me. You did not find it necessary to at least take 100,000 over five years to share between six opposition members. But today, in one financial year, you can tout that you will allocate 100,000 out of your CDP allocation. You know, Mr. Speaker, governance comes with continuity, and that is what persons don't understand if you look at the shape of the table around which we sit it is circular it is round and it speaks to the old phenomenon what goes around comes around you know today and imagine mr speaker he had the audacity to expound on it and to say they don't want to give it to me because they want to undermine me in my constituency. And oh, how my heart ached when I heard these words. I could never forget during the election I went to Castry South. I saw a certain character, a certain character, either big or small daddy or mommy, I'm not sure which one. Erected lights erected lights in a constituency of which he was not the rep. I went to Denry North. Member of Castle Central, yes. there is a resolution before you. Yes, I'm, I'm speaking to the resolution, Mr. I, Speaker. I don't see the connection. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I am basically attempting to show how we have stretched things so far that the Minister of Finance can now make resources available to the opposition, a, a feat which was never existed that during has, the reign. That has nothing to do with the resolution before us, Member. <laughs> Very well, Mr. Speaker. But, Mr. Speaker, 
The leader of the opposition wrote on his Facebook page an open letter to the Prime Minister. And in that letter, Mr. Speaker, he indicated quite lucidly that the Prime Minister did not understand the importance of construction. You remember that? He indicated that the Prime Minister does not understand the importance of construction. A man who took the package of material that you need for construction, remove that on steel, remove that on lumber, remove that on plywood, remove that on cement, remove that on blocks. You as leader of the opposition, you are intimating that he does not know the importance of construction. So what was that move for, Mr. Speaker? What was that move for? Why the removal of that on those building materials if one does not know that construction activity will bolster economic activity and thereby bring economic growth about, Mr. Speaker? You know, and he claims that on one hand, Mr. Speaker, that, and I was glad to have heard the member for Swazel say, why don't they support what is good? And that's the hypocrisy I don't like. That is the hypocrisy I don't like. Because I am sure if his dear leader, if the leader of the opposition had graced us with his presence in this August chamber today, I have my doubts as to whether those words would be emanating from the mouth of the member from Sozel. I don't like the hypocrisy. It was on their paid radio program, Mr. Speaker, that they claimed they were not supporting this move because people don't eat plywood. It was on their paid radio program that they said people will have to eat plywood soup. I didn't say it. They said it. Plywood soup. People don't eat plywood. You know? And they have a little short one, Mr. Speaker. First time you're hearing that. It is that kind of hypocrisy. So they come here on the one hand and we flash in mirrors as our leader would always say, the Honorable Prime Minister, pretend they support for the world to see. And then go in the holes, Mr. Speaker, and lambest the government for a move they know would redound to the benefit of the average poor citizen of this country. Hypocrisy. <laughs> Hypocrisy. <laughs> That's what it is. And he come here. Why are you thinking you're not about something good? You know, why are you thinking you're not about something good? Mr. Speaker, <laughs> you know, those are the kind of things you hear. That is the kind of garbage, Mr. Speaker, that people spew on the altar of political loyalty, Mr. Speaker. But we must learn as a people, we must learn as a people never to take benefits conferred upon the citizens of this country, whether by one party or the other, and play political football with it. We must learn not to do that. And if there is anything you all have done that would benefit St. Lucians, I will applaud you all, but you all did absolutely nothing. Yeah. You see, like this is zero rated. If I'm that, this has of a zero on it. You know, Mr. Speaker, there are three approaches the government could have taken with respect to building materials. Government may have sought not to interfere with the prices. Government may have sought to increase the prices to generate more revenue, or government may have sought to bring relief. Government chose the option that would be beneficial to everybody, and you heard them spinning the news, asking which poor person will build a house. Can you imagine? Can you imagine, Mr. Speaker, the bandy one? Which purpose will build a house? The bandy one. You know, 
which person will build a house and somebody calls and you get a response like yeah the rich will take advantage over the opportunity to build houses to rent i mean what kind of wayward thinking is this mr speaker how do we empower our people when we keep our thinking in that kind of cocoon mr speaker how can we grow our people you bring relief you are giving them an opportunity to build a house cheaper and they are saying no i don't support it huh? because the rich people will build out who will build the houses for the rich people you see even in your short-sightedness you don't realize that there is a labor component to construction you don't even realize that your myopia gives you jaundice eyes bright yellow you know even even let us argue for argument's sake that rich people capitalize on the benevolence of the government mr speaker can the benevolence of the government alone construct a house you need laborers you need carpenters you need masons you need tradesmen you need electricians plumbers but you know they go and they spin the news on spin news you know and the bandy one yeah yeah you know people really ply with soup you know that kind of ply with soup yeah you know mr speaker honestly earlier on i was speaking to some of my colleagues and even within the tenets of democracy sometimes a little autocracy needs to because you see you hear so much nonsense mr speaker that sometimes you tell yourself look i want to devoid myself of my hairy ability because some of you infuriate me to such an extent i can do without hearing anything at all <laughs> i mean a sense of reasoning a sense of reasoning that will not even find embrace by the market you know and somebody's actually typing that typing it sending it on a computer and one with a little more intelligence a little more intelligence would read it and laugh ho 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 because St. Lucian's really plywood soup Mr. Speaker you know and all the former administration has become accustomed to Mr. Speaker is making life more difficult for the Malawis of this country Mr. Speaker and the track record is testament of that fact they stop knife they stop step they stop the distress fund and guess what mr speaker as if to further financially imprison our poor poor people they remove they remove the subsidy on rice flour and sugar you know so as if malawis in this country mr speaker were the enemies of the last administration the enemies and every decision they took every decision they took mr speaker were financially draconian decisions that basically militated against a comfortable life by those persons in the in the fin in the lower echelons of our financial strata mr speaker you know and telling me the government brings relief and rather than embrace the relief we have everything negative to see mr speaker mr speaker this government introduced the national housing assistance program which has been rolled out pretty soon mr speaker and the prime minister called me and said to me mr minister let us give a little more to the people by awaiting the implementation of the vat so they can get a little more for the money mr speaker so when you would have been able to help 20 families or assist 20 households mr speaker you can stretch it to 12 and a half percent more you can now do 25. that is the thinking of the government mr. Speaker. that is the thinking of the government 
That is the thinking of the government. We can now help more people with the same resources. You know? And then you all in your myopia, led by a man whose mental faculty is empty, will follow whatever he says, believe in him, and you know, with hypocrisy at your side now, we'll say he's good, he's good. Because what? He's absent from the house today. Say it when he's there, Mr. Speaker. I need you to say it when he's there, Mr. Speaker. You know? I want you to say it when he's there. So, Mr. Speaker, this government led by Philip Joseph Pierre, who emanated from Castries Southeast, Marchand. Castries East, sorry. <laughs> Castries East. They always say, Mr. Speaker, I'm sure you're aware of the well known phenomenon wise people come from the East. <laughs> and this is a man who has shown compassion. And I'm not saying this because I am in his cabinet. I am saying it because it is the truth. Look at the kind of programs he has rolled out. Look at his brain children. The MSME helping small businesses. The youth economy. The housing assistance program. Increasing to the poor people. All sorts of things. Basically to help the underprivileged. And then I remember him saying in cabinet one time, gentlemen, we can no longer proceed with this distress fund not in place. Because it was meant for who? For the poor. It was meant for the poor. And it is aptly referred to as a distress fund. And it is time in times like this, Mr. Speaker, when the inclemency of our weather assails us, there are people who don't know if my small domicile can withstand the pressures of the inclemency of the weather. And so they look, at, they look outside and they say, Lord, please stop the rain. But we have a compassionate government, Mr. Speaker. And I'm glad to report that the distressed son that was taken out by the now leader of the opposition has been replaced by Philip Joseph Pierre to ensure Malawis have access to funds if and when the situation arises. So, Mr. Speaker, you know, I want to end by saying this. I want to end by saying this. When I listen to some of those people, Mr. Speaker, I listen to some of them. I listen to them chastise and castigate the government. They castigate the government by confer because the government conferred a benefit, a benefit on the poorer people of this country, Mr. Speaker. You ask yourself, Mr. Speaker, whether those people are suffering with either the discoloration of their brains or their eyes, Mr. Speaker. Because I suspect John, this does not confine itself to eyes alone. It is in the brain as well. Because you cannot be thinking rationally. You cannot be thinking objectively. You cannot be thinking in the interest of the poor people. When you are telling me that you don't support a benefit to the poor people of this country. You know what, Mr. Speaker? Only one place in the world that a benefit to poor people would not be appreciated only in St. Lucia. I thank you, Mr.